Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds at Co-op Motor Works at Motorhome Rehab Ranch. And today we're on location. In a, and this is this is the root mean. This is how far down we take a coach. Actually, it'll get it in the used steering column too. But this is how far down that we, we take a coach to start it building up. Mechanically first, of course. Today we're going to talk about body pads. Okay. So... <coughs> This is from a, a question from uh, one of ranch hands. So uh, after we do a little bit here, we're going to go into the bunkhouse and uh, and sit, sit and uh, talk a little bit more. I want to give you the theory on it. You say, well, you know, it's just a whole, the, the frame, the body sits on the frame. Well, yeah, you can see it right there. And uh, I guess you go, right? No, there's a lot to it. There's actually a lot of technology in a body pad. Um, Today's cars are unibody. Who's car, What are you doing under there, Elganza? What are you doing? She's she's under the mo. I don't know. She got to be around. I don't know. So so. There's a lot to do with body pads because uh, the unibody cars, they do a lot of uh, suspension padding and things like that to keep vibrating keep the 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 vibration the wheel vibration goes to the suspension goes to the frame from getting to the body that's what body pads are for okay so i'm going to show you what what gm did originally and then what i, I i'm going to speculate but i'm pretty sure of why they made a change that i'm going to show you okay and then what we do about it from there all right so um Come on, and uh, Scarlett's going to show you, uh, no, actually what we want to do first is we want to go in into the, the uh, place in Bunkhouse and let's talk a little bit. All right? See you there. Okay, guys, we're, we're back. <clears throat> so I know, you've, you know it's kind of boring in here in the schoolroom, but so I'm going to try to give you some content and fill it up like that. So I have a guest here today. Uh, Elvis came in to be with us. Hey, Andy. This is your Elvis, and I'm having to change the batteries twice on him. You got to come get this thing. Uh, Andy lives in Switzerland. Hey, man, I got your Elvis. All right, uh, and all, all you ranch hands, you have your uh, Gary Bovey uh, GMC for Idiots uh, .com cup, right? You need to get that. It's pretty good. It's uh, you know, you got to have that. It's a thumb drive. Uh, look up. GMCIdiotsGuide.com. Tell him hey for me. All right. So, body pads. <clears throat> Think about this. Here's your wheel. Here's your suspension, whatever it is, right? Call it two, two springs. Here's your, here's your frame. It's connected here. Suspension's connected here, okay? And your frame is a steel bar. Now, in, in like I said before, in later cars, the unibody, totally different world. But they still, the unibody had to address vibrating from, vibration from here to here. And here's your motorhome. Can't even draw a straight line today. Terrible, isn't it? Here's your motorhome. Now, it's vibrating here. We want to stop that vibration from getting into the body. That's what a body pad's for, okay? Now, in 73, 74, that's early coaches in, in this situation. Other times when somebody talks early or late, uh, the early is 73, 4, and 5. But in 75, GM took the interiors in-house. Before that, it was on... Uh, the interiors were made off campus at a place called Gemini. 75, they took the interiors inside and started doing more things with the body, and there were a lot of changes in 75. But generally regarded, 73, 4, 5 is early. 76, 7, 8 is late, except for some of the windows in 75, except for a few other things, okay? So, <clears throat> in this situation... It's 73, 74. They figured out in 75 they had a little issue. Okay, and here's the issue. You got your vibration here. You got your vibration here. 
originally, Scarlett right here, put in the picture of the early style coach. Okay? All right, take a look at this. All right. Right there, this gap in between here is, full, is filled rubber, right? It's a durometer rubber. Durometers is how spongy rubber is. So from front to back, GM did whatever they could do to make sure this body was placed on rubber on this frame. Sounds good, right? Problem is, rubber also has a vibration. It will transmit right through itself. And then into the body, now you got the vibration in the body. <clears throat> so my guess is the interior people, when they took the, took the thing from Gemini, which they built, they built conventional motorhomes. GM wanted to do something different. And I'll bet you the interior engineer said, this thing is vibrating a lot. Okay, so what did they do? They took out this piece of rubber. Took it out. Now, if you could hover the body above the frame, that'd be awesome, but you can't do that. What they did was they made a body pad. Each spot that the, the body had a, a frame member coming off, going to the other side, right? Can you see that? Okay. Every spot, they put a pad. One here, put a pad. Here, put a pad. See what I mean? So rather than having full contact area, the only vibration would be through where those pads were. Good engineer, you get to retire. But the problem with this was they used the same durometer. Remember we're talking about the durometer, the spongy the rubber? They used the same rubber. Actually, you know, the guys, the, the economy guys go, cool, man, we can make 15 coaches out of one of those long pads. Problem was they, should, they used the wrong, it, the durometer was too spongy to hold the body up long term in those, just in those areas. They needed a, a stiffer rubber. So what happened was, they crushed. They fell out. Boom. The way we found this out, we're putting in fuel tanks. Well, the fuel tank's connected to the frame, and the body's sitting on there, right? You need a half inch of gap. Body pad fell out. Body fell on the frame, fell on the top of the gas tank, and crushed the hoses. So I'm thinking, um, what am I going to do I need a half inch of gap. Are the people going to keep yelling at me because the hoses keep getting crushed? I know why they're crushed, because the body dropped on the frame. How can I get those body pads? How can I keep that body from dropping? All right, so I tell you what, hang on one second. Let me go get something. I'll be right back, okay? Go get a frothy beverage or something. You're, you're, in, you're in the galley anyway, so go over there to the galley and get something. Be right back. All right, guys, <clears throat> I left something out in the barn. So you see the problem. You see the big problem was the body was dropping on the frame, causing to crush the hoses, break. You've got to run brake lines, air lines, uh, propane lines, all through that gap between the body and the frame. You don't go under the frame, and it's not cool going through the thing. So. Vehicles that have frames, you got to go over the frame well, with most of the wiring and stuff. That's why that half inch is real important. It's also so it doesn't crush the hoses. So I'm thinking, well, what can I use? Well, one of my buddies' grandfather had a patent on an Elgin Street Sweeper brush. And when his, when his grandfather passed away, they're cleaning out his garage. And this is a real story. In the back, they had, he had a stack of those street sweeper blades, six feet tall. You know, the big street sweeper, the big one, six feet tall. Now, that's some serious rubber. So, for a while, we were cutting those things up in squares and using them in here as body pads. Now, here's what happened. <clears throat> Taking out the full-length body pad and replacing it with 
correct durometer, heavy durometer rubber, stop the body from falling, guaranteed, but also had less transmission of vibration because it would vibrate through here, but it wouldn't go through there. Go through here, not through there, not through there. See what I mean? So what you're doing, the same thing is, <laughs> in college, uh, I lived in a dorm and uh, there weren't any termites because they all left. There wasn't anything else left to eat. And I thought I was a real hot shot. I worked in for Lafayette as a bench tech. I had some big stereo stuff, you know. And my speakers, I would absolutely shake the house. People were aware, scared the house is coming apart. You know, turn it down, turn it down. I took four pint beer glasses. It happened to be a few around. And I put the speakers on the beer glasses. So basically what I did is I decoupled the speaker from the termite floor. It stopped the vibration of the speakers through the floor and they didn't make me turn my stereo down. It just blasted my brains right through, right at me. Uh, so that's the theory here. And it works. Number one, you need that half inch. Don't care. It could be metal. I don't care. Number two, we want to cut down the contact area from the frame to the body. Okay. Well, a couple of years we ran out of uh, Elgin Street Sweeper blades. <laughs> so I said, well, what, what can we get that is a heavy durometer rubber that, that won't cost us a fortune because big, thick rubber is expensive, that I can get a half inch thick plate of it? What can I use? So I ask a frustrated engineer, not me, how do I take a three inch diameter, about one inch thick hockey puck and cut it in half? <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna get all your engineers going, your brain just exploded. Because A, you put, it in a, you put this in a bandsaw, I'll visit you, send me a card, ask me how I know. An engineer had to figure out how to do that. All right, now that is a one half inch by three inch rubber. Uh, one of the GMC guys said it's about two durometers below steel. Perfect, never going anywhere. And I'm cutting down the surface area. Like I said, after 74, GM realized the problem was with the long thing, look good and all this. But like I said, the interior guys, I think said, hey, this thing's vibrating like crazy. The acoustic engineer came up with this idea, but he missed, it had to be stronger rubber, okay? There was, a, there was a, a group making body pad kit replacements on the West Coast that were identical to original. Good luck with that. You take 20, if you take 10 hockey pucks and cut them in half perfectly, then you have a body pad kit. We sell these for $65 for a kit. It used to be 50, but that was five years before COVID. So I'm sure, you know, 65 bucks, but see what you can do. I know your engineers are gonna run out right now and go buy 10 hockey pucks. Dudes, I, I, I'm telling you, do that. And if you can, awesome. If you can't, as soon as I get to start shipping again, I can ship you a set of hockey pucks, cut in half for $65. Now, the next video we're gonna do is how to put these in. Scarlett, show the picture of the one that's in. You got that one? Hold on. All right, so you see where the hockey puck goes in. You just glue it in there now. The next video, Jason's going to show you how to put that in. It's a trick. That's what you pay me for. So, <clears throat> body pad is not just a big piece of rubber. It does something. All right. Um, this video um, came from a request from one of the ranch hands. I hope that answered your question. Um, <clears throat> yes, you can use anything but it's got to be a strong, heavy durometer. If you can push it together, baby, you keep going, okay? 
If you're a bad person, if you're Jimmy Hoffa, you'll come back as a, a body pad on a GMC motorhome. All right, well, look, thank you for uh, the time. The next video we're going to do is we're going to try to answer a bunch of questions. This was just one. Uh, Scarlett reminded me that we have, uh, you're, you guys are stacking up, you know, all your questions and stuff. So uh, we're going to try to knock out a bunch of them on the next video. So hang with that one. In the meantime, go look at your body pads. Which one do you have? Early, late. If you have the late, count how many you have. Should be 20. See ya.